So today we're going to show you and do a workshop on how to go about time blocking in AccuFlow. Now this video will be a little bit more in depth about calendar blocking. So if you're fairly new to calendar blocking, we do actually have a useful Skillshare class I think you'll benefit from. But today this video is kindly sponsored by AccuFlow themselves. You can check them out in the link in the description. And for those who don't know what they are, they're a task consolidation application that brings together a lot of different tasks from a lot of different platforms and helps you to plot that in a calendar. You can check out more in-depth videos that we've already done about AccuFlow and you can find them linked below anyway. So before we begin, also my name is Francesco and welcome to Keep Productive. I'm excited to dive into this feature. So let's roll into today's video. So here we are with AccuFlow. Now I'm going to show you how you can effectively time block using this application. And obviously one of the many different things you can use is the command bar and bringing in other um, you know, uh, experiences like tasks from other sites and things like that. So that's just something to note with integrations. I'm gonna show you this from scratch in terms of using this with AccuFlow's core tasks. So I'm gonna bring up the command bar, which you can do by pressing option space. Now you can change this, but you can find a video about command bars that we've done very recently. And I'm gonna start creating a brand new task. So tomorrow uh, I'm gonna plan it out and I need to record some videos in the morning. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in record YouTube and put tomorrow at uh, 10 a.m. And as you can see, it's already started time blocking. Now, what's nice as well is I do have this connected to my Google Calendar. So it's coming up with a lunch event as well, which is good. So I've got a little bit of structure in my day. So you can connect it to things like Google Calendar, which will have all of your pre-built meetings in there, which is very helpful. Now, as you can see, I sort of added that instantaneously to my list. And if I were to go over to tomorrow, you can see that this is an item that's already scheduled in my calendar. But if I didn't want to go through that natural language input process, I could add a task up here. In this case, I actually need to uh, build out website blog posts. So I'm going to add that as a to do. Now, one of the nice things you have inside of AccuFlow is you have, I guess, these two core views. You have upcoming and today. Now today is helpful because I can scrubble across any of the days and plan them in advance. I can use this next day up here to skip ahead and naturally correlate everything that suits me. But what I can do is I can drag it in. Um, I'm going to show you upcoming in a moment because I feel like that's a really helpful function. So I've started to block these in and one of the things I could have done in the natural language input is actually put equals an hour because I know that this is going to take me probably about an hour. So all I can do is just drag it very simply, much like you would with another calendar experience uh, and things that you're typically used to. So you can move stuff around that's best suited to you. And you might see that there's this lock in the right hand corner. And this is really nice because you can unlock it from your calendar. So what I've set is, for example, my Google Calendar. For those who are viewing it potentially and looking to book a meeting, I'm actually block this as a busy time in my calendar which is nice because I can focus on deep, deep work. Nobody can book a meeting with me. That's why time blocking can sometimes be really effective for deep work. If you haven't yet read Cal Newport's book on deep work, it's really interesting about how you can get into these states of flow by making sure you don't have any interruptions, context switching during that period of time. And you can complement it with methods like the Pomodoro timer. I'll show you some of those methodologies near the end of this workshop. But you can start to see an idea of what the day looks like and what's nice as well is you get a bit of an indication of how much time you're spending collectively on this. So I can drag straight on this if I want to. And one of the things that I might want to do in the afternoon um, is um, actually spend some time with Otto, my little boy. So I have this as actually just a event. So being able to drag stuff on that as an event is really, really helpful. And I can change the calendar that I see as well. So there is an event that's different from my task items. Now, obviously, I've got that time in the afternoon. And what's nice as well is I can actually create an event uh, from this area, from the command bar, or from um, the actual task. You can create a task from here as well. So in this case, I want to go ahead and create a report for tomorrow afternoon at 3.30 p.m., 
and I want it to last 30 minutes. So I can start using the natural language input and you can see that it's popped up inside of my area. Now, I'm starting to schedule this stuff and I'm getting some time out for, for a bit of breaks and you start to see I'm calendar blocking. But one of the things that I'm not doing that is debatable, it's more of a whether it suits you or not, is I'm not overloading myself with too many things. I'm not adding micro breaks in here. I'm assuming that these small areas in between are breaks. If you did want to add breaks and you found it helpful, then that's something you can do, but it's not something that I de de definitely put in because I feel like it might be overkill. I feel like things that are more static, like lunch or like maybe even like uh, a morning routine structure is okay, but I don't know whether overstuffing your calendar can make it sometimes a bit too rigid and a bit too messy, especially when I'm moving something around. I would have to move my brakes around then and that can sometimes be a little bit um, stiff when you're trying to organize something. Now, one of the things you can do is you can put them inside of different labels, which might give you a bit of context of what you're actually working on. So in this case, that goes to editing and I can naturally add uh, a priority as well. But in this case, I'm just gonna add some useful labels to help um, administrate my sort of areas. Now, what's nice as well is once these have labels, you can view them in the different label, basically folders that you can access and sort of narrow down what you're work working on. Same goes with the, um, with the the website stuff as well. I'm just gonna add a label to it here and put it in admin. So I've started to block out my day and what I quite like about this is it's a nice, it's viewable inside of a calendar. Um, but one of the things you can do is go over to calendar settings and I'm gonna show you a few of the benefits of um, some of the different views that you might like. I'm gonna show you upcoming as well, so don't worry. Um, as you can see, I've got the one day view on, but two day view and three day view is something that I, I quite like as well. I've got weekends turned off so you can have hide weekends and I've got secondary time zone there because I tend to work with a lot of people that are based in San Francisco and I like to always see what that time is and how it correlates to that time zone. Now you can see here that um, obviously this is the two day view um, and you've got the three day view as well. I really like how that works um, because like for example, if, if there was something that moved in a day, you can shuffle it across and it doesn't really feel too invasive but it feels flexible enough for me to do that, which I quite like. Um, and I also like the ability to go all the way up until a week and a month view. Now, if you're looking for a more flexible view that is much more Kanban-like, that allows you to calendar block in this way, there's a view called Upcoming, which I really like. And you can see here that you can scroll to this one and you can see the day that it relates to. And what's nice is it appears more as like a Kanban experience that you can move dates and even delay stuff if you want to. And naturally, um, you can see that this task hasn't been given a set time yet, but I can move it into the relevant areas. So I really like how you can use upcoming for that. And that's like a really unique ability in there. But you can start to see that even today, I've got um, all of my events already planned and things like this, and I'm already in this zone. But you can see how effective time blocking can be when you get it right and you can start using it in practice. So that's a little bit about how and when it comes to sort of time blocking. I mentioned the Pomodoro timer methodology, which is a 25 minute on, five minute off timer, repeated cycle of four, and then you take a longer break. However, there is a feature inside of um, AkiFlow that allows you to do um, your focus mode. I believe it's just F. Let me find it. So if I'm say inside of Record YouTube tomorrow morning, I can press F over a task in AkiFlow and I get this lovely clean view of what I'm focusing on and I can make some notes, but it's very much distraction free when it comes to just knowing what you know, need to know next, like what's the next meeting, but also gives you a view of what's coming up in the day as well. So that is the time blocking abilities inside of AkiFlow. 
You can drag in any of the integrations you have, whether that's Todoist, Notion, or the many others that are available. And it's pretty powerful when it comes to being able to bring all of that in, in databases in Notion too. We've got a video on that if you do fancy checking it out. Anyway, folks, a big, big thank you for stopping by today. Hopefully you enjoyed today's feature about time blocking in AccuFlow. Let us know if you have any questions and I look forward to diving into more features. Thank you very much to AccuFlow for sponsoring. And if you're interested in the actual app, you can check it out in the link in the description. Thank you very much, folks, and I'll talk to you soon. Cheerio.